is it? The home of my intellectual crafting. Well, after uh, winning the uh, Rolex Award for Enterprise, I had the pleasure of meeting a fellow laureate, a genuine explorer, who later became my best friend, Francesco Sauro. <coughs> we chatted to each other about our as research about our exploration and discoveries and our research. But he inspired me with an eye-opening quote. He said, we don't really need to go to Mars to explore something new. So with the existing, the amazing satellite technologies that we have nowadays, and Google Map, for example, have we ever wondered if there are some places in the world that we haven't discovered yet. Places that have been pristine and virgin for millions of years until now. Well, that quote ignited my curiosity, and I decided to join their expeditions. About four months ago, I had the privilege of going to places that have never been discovered before, places that are far away from home, very difficult to reach, and we believe, and those places we believe that only five human of the entire human being race have ever been to. I have been to caves in South America. Not on a holiday, but even better on a scientific exploration. My trip started by traveling through four different continents over three days of consistent traveling. Not only in giant airplanes, but also I traveled in tiny Cessnas and aircrafts. This is the picture of one of them that actually did not start from the first time because its battery was flat and it needed a jump start to start it. And it was also so difficult to reach to our base camp that we needed a helicopter to fly with. And here's the journey of our time. So after we reached the, our colorful uh, base camp at the summit of the Aoyan Tapui, the home of the highest waterfall in the world, I enjoyed the sunshine for only a few moments to have my lunch. And I left the daylight behind me and disappeared to the mysterious world and completely dark world at the cave and stayed there for four nights. <coughs> we accessed the cave and walked through different paths. And despite being a, a humongous cave, and actually it's the world's largest cave of its kind that was discovered to date. And here's a picture of, of a person at the bottom of the screen. If you, if that is. That's just to show how, how huge this gallery is. I also had to crawl through very tiny and tight paths. And here's the picture of me taking selfie just <laughs> after releasing my, my helmet, which was stuck in, in that path. And guess what? After I, I, I crawled along, my backside was stuck as well. <laughs> However, at the end, we, we reached to great places, extremely wonderful world, and uh, 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 the caves. We are, the, the formation inside the cave were, were extraordinary. And that I, I, I truly witnessed the power of water, which crafted the stones over millions of years in those caves. The, surroundings, the caving suit, the helmet, and the other gears that we had, I felt that I wasn't on earth. Everything, everything was near to me. 
I even would, uh, ha went to places that were extremely noisy due to active river system that was running inside the cave. But I also went to places that were extremely quiet, disturbingly quiet, to the level that I was about to hear my heartbeats. We sampled a huge mountain of mud, water of a blue lake, and also a purple salami material, a, a yellow biofilm that only existed in one part of the cave, and the white powder that only existed underneath flat rocks in one particular part of the cave. So after walking, crawling, and sleeping in that cave, it wasn't easy, of course. It was an extreme physical and emotional challenge. But why I decided to do this in the first place? To answer this question, I have to change gears and talk to you about an, an issue that has been receiving most of my attention and time. After the discovery of penicillin by Sir Alexander Fleming in 1928, the discovery opened a, a major breakthrough in medicine and was the beginning of a subsequent development of many antibacterial compounds. Antibiotics since have saved millions of lives. Unfortunately, however, today we are under threat by bacteria that are resistant and not killed by available antibiotics. They are becoming known as superbugs. So, I can say without doubt that antibiotic resistant bacteria are the world's greatest threat to human health at this point of time and in the future. And we are at the dawn of a possible nightmare scenario in development where we will see infections that were easily treatable before not being treatable anymore because of superbugs. And to put this, this into context, the director of the World Health Organization said a very famous quote. And she said, and here I read, a post-antibiotic era means in effect an end of modern medicine as we know it. Things as common as strip throat or child scratch knee could once again kill. It is estimated that by the year 2050, about 10 million people will die annually because of antimicrobial resistance. That is, one person every three seconds will die due to superbugs if we don't act, if we don't take actions today. So one of the major initiatives by, is the one by the World Health Organization to combat antimicrobial resistance. And in this context, here at the University of Queensland Center for Clinical Research, we have been conducting different studies to tackle the issue of antibiotic resistance. One of them is by studying bacteria from different parts of the world in order to understand the global predominance of antibiotic resistant bacteria. And that will act as an important piece of the puzzle to complete the global picture of antibiotic resistance. So I, because of this, I have confronted many superbugs. Phantom superbugs, for example, that clog themselves with genetic material will make them very difficult to be diagnosed and hence patients could not be treated with the appropriate antibiotics. And we also have reported the world's first pan-resistant bacteria of its kind, which is resistant to all commercially available antibiotics. And those devastating discoveries were actually the base of my conversation with Francesco. And we both thought together about how those superbugs have evolved over time. However, the reality is, to be able to answer this question precisely, we need to go back in time and study the all-time microbes and compare them to the current microbes that we see in the form of superbugs. Unfortunately, however, we don't have time machines yet, but we do have caves. Caves are, are actually windows to the past, 
We are hypothesizing that bacteria that are, have been living in caves for billions of years and have not have had any exposure with human before, not even the modern, modern, uh, the modern form of antibiotics, but, uh, but give us a clue how the current superbugs have evolved. We're also hypothesizing that the polymicrobial ecology inside the cave system, which has been a polymicrobial ecology for millions of years, there might be microbes that are producing chemical compounds in the form of antibiotics. And since those caves have not been discovered before, we might discover new chemical compounds and new antibiotics that might help the future fight against superbugs. Another thing that I'm, I'm really keen about as well is try, I, I really hope that this particular expedition will raise the profile of antibiotic resistance around the world. And before, before I finish my talk, I just want to share with you three life lessons that I have acquired from this experience. One, I have experienced the power of communication. By co communicating with Francesco, conveying my ideas, and just talking about the, the experience that we had, we had as well as the, the, the future thinking of how we can fight this issue, I wouldn't have had this experience. This, the, thick, the second thing that I would like to share with you is the power of interdisciplinary collaboration. I think we live in a very fast world. However, unfortunately, this world has a lot of issues in it. That needs our power as future frontiers to encounter. And I think we need to unite our effort to combat these issues. I'm a clinical microbiologist who worked with geologists in order to, ha to, to have an access to samples and data that I would never have had before without this collaboration. And the third and last thing that I would like to share with you is the power of stepping out of your comfort zone. It took me one moment only to leave the air-conditioned building at UQ, take my clean and white gown off, say goodbye to my family, and go to a mysterious world at the unknown for the hope to help the fight against superbugs. With, with these three thoughts, I would like to thank you.